Tonight, you don't just watch the news, you become a part of it. First of all, we have brand new information now on that apartment fire. The one we brought you live is breaking news as that fire burned through a West El Paso apartment complex. We now know what investigators say started it. Also tonight, words of optimism on the efforts to save El Paso's Children's Hospital. We also know what happened today in UMC's special meeting, kind of. Also, Floyd Mayweather, he is calling Manny Pacquiao a coward tonight. It comes after the champ changed his mind and said he does not want a rematch after all. About that coward comment, well, Miley is saying, isn't it the other way? Saying Mayweather is the one who's afraid. Also, if you know anything about New Mexico, you know there's a question, red or green? Talking, of course, about chilies. So can you believe they just pulled the plug on the whole enchilada fiesta? People are seeing red. Or maybe an opportunity for green money. Roman saying El Paso's gain. Bring it here. How about that red and green little play on words there, Nicole? <laughs> nice, Bob. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, the rain returns to the forecast. I'll let you know if it will affect your Mother's Day weekend plans. That's coming up in Storm Track Weather. It's all next on ABC 7 at 9. Get ready. You become part of the day's news right now. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7 at 9 on the El Paso Las Cruces CW. Hello everybody, thanks so much for joining us tonight on ABC 7 at 9 on the CW. You're watching the only newscast in the borderland with all your social media buzz. I'm Bob Harp. And I'm Nicole Gomez tracking what you're saying. I'm also tracking clear skies and rain that will return to the forecast. We'll talk about those details and weather. It's pretty nice, just stepped outside. Quite comfortable, Nicole. Beautiful. We'll get that forecast coming up. Thanks so much. Alright, let's get to the new information right now on that fire that burned through a West El Paso apartment complex. We now know what officials say started it. First of all, this is the one that happened at the Mesa Village Apartments, pretty close to Mesa and Belvedere. The El Paso Fire Department tonight is now reporting it was started by plumbers who were doing maintenance in one of the apartment units. Tonight, we're told now six families are getting help from the Red Cross because they do not have a place to stay. The fire was contained to just one building in the apartment complex because the fire department was able to keep it from spreading to the others. Good news though, tonight we're being told nobody was hurt. So again, though, six families, unfortunately, with some damaged uh, personal belongings and no place to stay. Uh, tonight we also have some brand new information on the county's effort to save the financially troubled children's hospital. I think both organizations are hopeful that we will have some sort of resolution here very quickly. Um, whether or not I could put a date to that, I can't at this time. Well, that is right. After an executive session meeting today, UMC is still uncertain if it will meet the new May 15th deadline. UMC met with managers and consultants to pour through some documents and get the ball rolling on the deal with El Paso's Children's Hospital. They also talked about the due diligence process with their term sheet agreement with Children's. They will take that, what they found, to their meeting with El Paso County Commissioners. That will happen on Monday. And also tonight, well, whatever they discussed, El Paso County Judge Veronica Escobar is still hopeful of actually making this deal work. There's been more progress in the last 24 hours than there has been for a while. Well, the meeting that she is talking about was about keeping El Paso Children's Hospital operational. Now, she wouldn't give us any details today at the county commissioner's meeting, but we do know they were talking about legal options available for the hospitals. Again, all that new information from these meetings will be hopefully revealed on Monday when UMC meets with the county. On Monday, will the commissioner's court will get briefed on what happens today. There's there's more information that I think will be available to UMC today. I don't have it, won't see it, won't know about it until Monday. In other news today, the man facing criminal penetration charges may actually get his case dismissed. Police saying Daniel Landon allegedly sexually assaulted a six-year-old girl in Las Cruces. But because the roadblocks in this case, his attorney is saying Landon doesn't have a right to a fair and speedy trial. The girl's mother, though, thinks that should not matter. My daughter never asked to be molested. She didn't ask for a trial at all. And if I feel like as a mother, if I don't do and fight for her, then she'll never have the justice she deserves. 
Well, there is a pending motion for the case to be dismissed later this month. Landon was initially charged with criminal sexual contact, but in December, that charge was upgraded to penetration. Okay, so developing all this week, of course, I'm sure you know, election week right around the corner. It's your voice, your vote this Saturday. And again, that's election day on Saturday. And we will have complete results and complete coverage from election night. FYI, you can no longer cast an early vote. So Saturday, you actually have to go to your specific voting location to find out where that is or to look at a sample ballot. Click on News and the Election Center at KVIA.com tonight. And some of you were a little bit confused about using fire stations as polling places this election. Well, that is because you may end up deciding the pay raises and the benefits that El Paso firefighters get. Well, ABC7 confirmed from the County Elections Administrator, Lisa Wise, and she tells us using the stations is okay. She told us that public buildings with elected officials or candidates are used all the time. But that still means campaigning for the issue will not be allowed within 100 feet of any polling place, place regardless if it's a fire station, a school, or anywhere else. ABC 7 and Tech Stop with live traffic coverage tonight. This is on the west side, Mesa and Wrestler. Uh, you can see everything is flowing okay, which is normally a very busy intersection. Keep in mind, you're going to see some more road closures downtown. Uh, I-10 West in the Porfirio Diaz area, which we've been seeing every day this week. Uh, tech Stop crews doing some construction, so just be safe out there, folks. By the way, you can connect with us by going to social media, Nicole. We've got Twitter, Facebook, you name it, we're all over the place. Oh yes, and as always, when we have severe weather, we constantly update our Facebook, Twitter, yes. and even Instagram, so make sure you follow us. But Bob, our forecast looks great tonight and through the weekend, but I am tracking some changes. We'll talk about those changes in just a bit. Let's talk about what's going on out there right now, which is not much, mostly clear skies and comfortable temperatures. We're at 78 degrees just outside of the studio, and at Dr. Hornado Middle School, we're at 72, New Mexico Farm and Ranch, 70 degrees, 74, at Mountain View High School. School. So again, it is nice and comfortable out there right now. Now our high today, 85 degrees. Our low this morning, 62. So our temperatures were above average this morning, but as far as our average low, uh, we are well above average for this time of year. Now our region wind gust currently 18 miles per hour in El Paso, 16 Silver City, and elsewhere those wind speeds are calm. But coming up, I'll let you know if we're expecting any rain in the forecast. I can also tell you that the winds will pick up and I'm also tracking cooler temperatures. But those details coming up in your full forecast. All right, you're a busy woman tonight, Nicole. Uh, I know you're busy with the weather, but how about a little history lesson for you? Don't know if you know the exact date. All right, September 1814, <laughs> Francis Scott Key wrote America's National Anthem after the British bombing of Fort McHenry. After 25 hours, Key saw the stars and stripes still flying high. 200 years later, the battle over the flag itself is finally over in the Canutillo School District. It's a story drawing national attention. It sure is. You at home, you might remember Hunt Communities objected to a flag-like mural painted on the side of the new Reyes Elementary School, saying it did not meet the color requirements of the neighborhood. Well, eventually, Hunt allowed residents to settle the debate. Neighbors said they liked the flag and wanted the mural repainted. Just when we thought the dispute was over, another one. Who would pay for it? Tonight, we finally have the answer with the man the school is named after saying this was a battle worth fighting for. Of course, I'm talking about former Congressman Sylvester Reyes. Veterans and a Canotillo school board member, he is a veteran and a school board member. The district, he says, will actually pay for the mural and he is now introducing Operation Paint It Back. Our complete coverage continues right now with the latest from today's meeting at district headquarters. Now, the district wanted the mural back on the side of Ray's Elementary, but again, now it's clear they'll have to pay for it. But Operation Painted Back, it's a push for you to help raise the money. The former congressman and vet said when Hunt Communities announced it was removing the flag, he knew it would not go over well with the folks in the neighborhood. A simple no was not going to uh, prevail. And I uh, told him, I says, you, you don't know uh, what the veteran community is capable of communicating uh, publicly uh, and, and accomplishing by being unified. And, and we're standing here today because of those veterans that, and the community that stood with us and said, no, this is not right. We need to, we need to paint this flag.
Ray is, by the way, is already promising to pay $1,000 out of his own pocket and will help raise $5,000 of the $50,000 needed to pay for the flag murals repainting. When Operation Painted Back, just visit KVI.com and click on this story. And you know, of course, people are blowing up our Facebook page tonight on this one. Uh, just getting started, so let us know what you have to say about this. Uh, this is a long one here. Uh, P, uh, PIO is asking for donations in a GoFundMe account. Ridiculous! As if our taxes for CISD weren't already super high, which is fine. We voted for the upgrades and we got them, but no way will I donate to vote for this. Uh, some articles are quoting it to cost 50000 Really? My house would go cost like 800 to paint. Why is this so much money? Okay, want to let you know that it's the GoFundMe account that they are raising the money through. We have a link to that on our website, kvia.com. So if you want to help out, that's where you can find the link. Now, Nicole, another one that people are talking about, no rematch apparently for the Mayweather and Pacquiao fight too. That's not going to happen. And many of you already voicing your opinions like Danielle, who says, the true coward is a man that beats a woman. Then Glenn comments, yeah, because I I was looking forward to the snooze fest too. Give me a break. <laughs> that was the lamest boxing match I've ever seen. Oh, Glenn. <laughs> Glenn, we love you. Floyd Mayweather set in an upcoming interview with Showtime that at this moment he is no longer interested in a rematch with Pacquiao because Pacquiao's a sore loser and he's a coward. The interview will air Saturday night after the network's replay of boxing's richest fight, which Mayweather won by decision last weekend in Las Vegas. He's still undefeated. Now, asked if he thought Pacquiao was hampered by that right shoulder injury that later required surgery, Mayweather said absolutely not. So, of course, these comments coming in. Nicole, let's get right to those. Who cares? Two overpaid fools. <laughs> Raul, that was a fight? I thought I was watching Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> oh, yes. How is Pacquiao a coward if he's the one that wants the rematch? Someone tell Floyd to look up coward in the dictionary. Fernando goes on to say, <laughs> the guy who hesitated to fight him for five years runs away while fighting. Mayweather, please go drown yourself in battery acid. Ouch. <laughs> Okay, Fernando, those are some strong words there, buddy. <laughs> All right, if you want to join the uh, conversation happening on our Facebook pages, Nicole, all they have to do is find us on See You on the CW on Facebook and, of course, Twitter as well, right? That's right. All right. Hey, well, the city now saying quality of life bond projects are coming in on time and under budget. But one of the most important, it's being plagued by new costs. Yes, more delays. What is the holdup with the San Jacinto Plaza? This ABC7 time-lapse video shows a snapshot of the construction taken every month from May of last year to today. From the get-go, it's been the center of controversy, like plans that don't include restrooms for the plaza, and a lot of you were not happy about that, to the completion date, or lack thereof. It's been pushed back so many times, the city stopped saying when it would be finished. So what is the deal? ABC7's Andrew J. Polk investigates tonight in a special report. You'll see it only on ABC7, and it airs tonight at 10 o'clock. And tonight, we also invite you to join a discussion now underway. Put it up on Facebook a few minutes ago. This is about protections for breastfeeding mothers. The state Senate Bill 1479 would extend guaranteed work breaks for women who need to pump breast milk. Ariana telling us, I have many friends who are teachers who would have nursed way longer had the proper accommodations been allowed and provided for them. Then Eric says, and we wonder why we can't keep good teachers. Not only are they underpaid, they have unfair restrictions imposed on them. These protections need to stay enforced. And again, check us out on Facebook. This is fresh and hot and this discussion just getting underway. So take part in that. Also, hey, listen to this, Nicole. You were telling me about this the other day. A young El Paso woman needs your help at home to become a new Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. There's a way to vote for this Eastwood High School graduate to help her live out the dream. Stay right where you are. We're going to tell you how you can do it. Also, a story tonight on fire. Well, the fire's out pretty much. Roman saying, El Paso's game. Bring it here. Ted asking, so no more party? They're talking about the whole enchilada fiesta canceled for good. It's been around almost my entire life. What am I going to do, Nicole? party. <laughs> Celebrate the nice weather we're having because it will be nice for the next few days, but I'm tracking a cool down and rain. Your storm track weather forecast coming up after the break. This is ABC 7 at 9 on the CW. Don't just watch the news. You are the news. We'll be right back.